Here we go. How are you? How are you? We're very well. And may I say, you have easily the coolest bedroom of anyone who's been on the show. Oh, thank you very much. I am seriously, I want a bedroom like yours. That looks no, so it's been a it's been a bit of a lockdown project. It's been quite nice to fill the time doing something like that. Yeah. No, Louis, we're so grateful. Thank you for joining us. It's awesome. No, thank you for having me. You're joining us from Oxford. Is that where home is? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It is awesome. So we've had a lot of excited kids for today. I'm ashamed to say I haven't seen the show, but I loved the books. And I want to know, you filmed 25 episodes of a series of unfortunate events. It took most of your teenage years. Uh, yeah. How did you get into it? What was the audition process like? Perhaps you can give us a little kind of <clears throat> feed up to that first day on set. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was quite a surreal process, I think. So I, I did an audition for it in, it must have been in November. Um, and then it was another five months or so before I, I heard anything for a second audition. I was told I was driving, well, my mum was driving me, obviously, um, somewhere on, on a Saturday morning. Uh, and we got an email from my agent saying uh, they want to fly you out to LA for the second audition on Tuesday. So I had the sudden sort of whirlwind few days trying to figure out how to, how to possibly do that, getting time off school and all that. Um, Ended up going and, and I mean, as much as anything, I thought it was a great experience, a great, great chance to see a new city. Um, I didn't really necessarily know anything would come of it. Um, yeah, uh, and then I, I suppose the audition went quite well. And it, but, was, and it was a few months till you were on set or quite a short period of time? It was, it was, another, it was another few months, yeah. Um, yeah, I can't remember quite how long actually, but it, 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 was, it was definitely a while. I remember my first day on set, I was just absolutely petrified. Um, I think they, they kindly did the sort of easier scenes first, which was, which was nice. But it was just from going from having done practically nothing before and, and you know, being a very average teenager to being an equally average teenager in a very surreal environment. Louis, um, what's the, what, what, what is the audition process like? Run us through uh, an audition. Uh, so you're usually sent some what we call sides. So that's a few pages of a, a script. Um, a few days before, maybe a, a week before, um, and you rock up, and it's usually a sort of 10, 10 minute slot. You maybe do the scenes twice, perhaps, with a, a casting director in the room who's filming it, um, and then they uh, they take that that tape and show it to the necessary people, and uh, yeah, I, I suppose some some magic happens behind the scenes that is, it's beyond me. <laughs> Amazing, and I imagine the sets must have been incredible. I mean, such a a story like filled with mystery and drama and kind of ridiculous abstract stuff. What was, what was it like being on set? Really remarkable actually. I think my favorite parts of, of filming it were definitely uh, walking onto a new set each time. Um, what I think a lot of people don't realize is that they, they built pretty much everything you see. I think a lot of people assume it was green screen, but we had fantastic set designers and, and builders that, that would sort of work around the clock to, to produce these insane structures. Um, so we were very lucky with that. Nice. So at this point, you're a nervy early teenager. How old were you? 14, 14. 14. 14 years old. We've got people watching who are 14 years old. And you start, it's day one. What are your top tips for all those actors out there who get a bit nervous? Oh, I, I'm still very bad at, at getting nervous. Genuinely, if I walk into a new set or, or I'm doing an audition, I still get sort of terribly nervous. Um, I suppose take some deep breaths. There's all the classic stuff. Um, yeah, it's, it's trying, I guess it's just trying to enjoy it really and, and ground yourself in the fact that it is, yes, a very strange experience. It's also the one that you're very lucky to be having um, and, and take a moment to look around and enjoy the fact you're doing it. You, you, were, you, were, you were acting alongside some pretty famous people, Neil Patrick Harris being one of them. Uh, did you have a sense of imposter syndrome? A sense absolutely, of, yeah. absolutely, definitely, definitely. Um, but I'm not sure that ever really goes away as an actor. I think that you're, you're constantly probably uh, feeling out of place with what you're doing, um, which is part of the joy of it, I think. I know, I think it's, it's not something that goes away as a human being. <laughs> Maybe. As a fully middle-aged man now, <laughs> the imposter syndrome does not go anywhere. So if you're a kid out there watching, or frankly to you, Louis, don't worry about it. it good, good. So let's, let's go back. So we're going, to we're going to come more onto the show and the series and talk a little bit about the new Hulu uh, miniseries that you've just done, which is epic, by the way. Um, Thank you. you. Were you always into acting? How did you get into acting? Were you in school plays? How did that work? 
yeah, I think when I was sort of six, maybe I, I started doing it just for fun. I think my mum thought it would build confidence or, you know, it's quite a good, good exercise. Um, so I started in a sort of local theatre group, just messing about really, meet new people and, and have fun. Um, and I sort of kept doing that on the weekends until I was well, probably 13. Um, and then uh, a director for, for an opera came in to, to audition some people. And it was the first audition I'd ever done or that had ever been through this, this theatre group. And I think I just got very lucky. Um, so I, I did that and then it was a fantastic experience actually. I'm still in touch with a lot of the people I did that with. Uh, and, and, and then got an agent through that and, and just auditioned since. And then how, how do you, I mean, there are lots of kids, 13, 14 listening out there. How did you combine school and your profession? So that's a, that's a real challenge, actually. Um, so you'll have on-set shooters uh, most of the time. Um, so in between setups, so to, to shoot a scene, you have to shoot from multiple different angles and change the lighting and move the cameras. And that usually takes around 20 minutes. Uh, so at least in Canada, where, where, where it films, um, you'd be rushed off to a separate schoolroom uh, sort of try and write a third of an essay in 20 minutes or, or do half a math test uh, and then be rushed back onto set for another sort of hour of filming and another 20 minutes of schooling. And, um, so it gets quite intense but uh, it, it's I think it suited me to learning that way I think it was quite nice to not just be focused on one thing or the other. I guess there's a kind of flexibility to it isn't it which must be quite attractive but do you look back now you're 18 and think yeah I'm really glad I worked hard school was really valuable or do you think oh I could have done things a bit differently or tried harder in that through my filming time? I, I, I did try and work as hard as I, I could really through, um, through, through that schooling experience. Um, I was very lucky to have a really fantastic tutor um, particularly up to, to GCSEs. Um, particularly now I'm applying to universities I'm, I'm still doing all of, all of that more, well, that's more, going to be my next question, is, which is what next? You're leaving school now. What's the what's the plan? Are you great guns towards an Oscar, or are you going to go <laughs> a little bit of education? Is what I want. Uh, it's it's I'm very much at cross crossroads at the moment. I think a lot of my plans have been slightly, you know, uh, rocked by coronavirus. I was planning on having a gap year and hopefully giving acting a bit of a, another go through that. Um, I, I think I, I do think education is important in general. Um, just uh, just having more life experience as much as anything else is, is never a bad thing. Um, so I, I definitely do want to go to university at some point and, and study more and, and develop as a human being. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm not sure. I, I think a, a gap year would be the next thing, but I, I, I'm actually writing to university at the moment and thinking of maybe seeing if I can start next year instead of, instead of a year off, uh, just, just to just if it's unrealistic to be doing anything this next year. Well, with an educationist hat on, I think you'll have a great chance in clearing. Because actually, Perfect. Yeah. people are going to be struggling for university places, but there's going to be loads of dropouts. So you're in there. Get to university. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. I hope so. Louis, can I ask, before we get on to uh, more acting questions, uh, there's a question I hear, which is, how does it feel like to walk down the red carpet? Uh, it's, it's very, very surreal. I've only done it sort of three times for, for different series of, of a series of unfortunate events. Um, but there's really nothing quite like it. You sort of almost forget what's going on around you. And, and it's, it's this sort of flashing lights and people shouting your name to try and get you to look in a certain direction and then being dragged from, into, it's, it's, it's very strange. Um, when, people, when people say it's tough to be grounded, do you think that's true? Is it tough to stay grounded or is it just people are doing a bad job of it when they get to it? <laughs> no, I, th I, I, it's, it, I think particularly those sort of, I think a lot of, a lot of the time there's this image of actors having this constantly glamorous life of, of red carpets and, and press and, and all of that stuff. Um, and yes, there, there's probably two weeks every time something drops that you are being whisked to red carpets and, and having that more cliches actory experience. Um, but I think what probably warps people is more than returning home to normality after that. I think a lot of people struggle with the disconnect between those two weeks where they're told they're everything and they're told this is, you know, you're, you're doing well. And um, then the reality of going back, for me at least, back to school, back to, to you know, 
small Oxfordshire village. Uh, so I, I think being aware of, of that shift, I hope, keeps people grounded. I hope I, I, I can stay grounded. But it's, I think you, you, seem, you seem to be not struggling at all. You seem like an incredibly grounded. Oh, well, thank you. That's... So I think you've got that one nailed to perfection. <laughs> As anything, all of this has probably taught you it's to adapt. I mean, actors are all about adapting, right? And like, you've had one of the most ups and downs sort of adaptive teenage experiences of anyone. So that's a cool thing. Hopefully, hopefully. yeah, it's a useful skill, definitely. We've got some some diehard fans with specific questions out there. So oh, fantastic! Forgive me on this, but people want to know a bit about um, about Olaf and the twins and like what that dynamic was like on set. Who were the who are the close friends of yours out there? I mean, obviously, the, the schoolroom really, in a weird way, brought brought the kids on set together very much. But it was oddly isolating from some of the adults. So if, if you're in a schoolroom for those 20 minute blocks, then you do, you know, all day really to, to bond with people. So uh, Melina, who played Violet, and uh, the, the people that played the Quagmire, Dylan and uh, Avi, um, we all got very close, which was really lovely to have some people of a similar age through that um yeah hb says who can you explain who who your who your character was and how he developed in the series so klaus uh is intrinsically sort of uh curious i think um and so he was very uh he always had a book in his hand he was always very uh uh excited to learn and, and to to grow in that in that way um, but he just had a fairly horrendous series, an unfortunate series of, unfair, an unfortunate series of events um, that led him to lots of sort of misadventures and uh, being moved from sort of household to household. It's all quite bleak, if I'm honest, but uh, I hope there are some funny bits along the way. It was very good. <laughs> um, and, 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 then, and then moving to your newest project, um, all about Catherine the Great, you know that's a big budget even more well i say big budget so was the, the previous one but what was that like um playing with some pretty phenomenal actors and actresses there it's really I, I was so grateful to to get the chance to do that again it filmed um over my sort of a level studying period which now seems increasingly irrelevant but at the time it, it was it was the perfect size role to feel like i'm still uh still have time to spend you know four days a week studying doing maths and english and, and the necessary uh you know learning um while still getting a bit of a break to to do the things i enjoy doing on set uh so it was a really phenomenal experience and and just fantastic people who have remained some of the most wonderful kind people um yeah so thoroughly thoroughly enjoyable and, and someone's just asked, what are your favourite hobbies? What, what do you get up to on set? What do you love outside of the crazy world that there's acting? I mean, a bit of, a bit of guitar. As a, yeah, I, I love that. Um, definitely playing a lot of music and listening to music. Uh, I think it's always nice to just switch off with, with some tunes. Um, but if not that, uh, I like taking pictures. So I love uh, just going out with the camera. And again, it's, it's a nice way to force you to notice little details and appreciate sort of beauty wherever it is um you're a true artist a true a no true i don't know i don't know about that a wannabe yeah. artist perhaps but um and you and you started a go. podcast i have indeed i have indeed of course yes which about has been that. great fun we've had a uh, amy west mcnulty on uh Declan mckenna and Elle fanning came on for an episode as well which has been which has been good how do people find that let's direct some of these viewers towards the podcast. yes okay so well, well wherever you normally find podcasts it's on spotify uh apple podcasts Podbean, sort of all, all the other uh, podcast places. Oh, yeah, I'd love you to have a listen if, if you could. We've had a couple of people ask also about your American accent. What was that process like? They hire a, a young, little, scrawny-looking English kid to play in a, an American accent. How did you how did you stumble into that one? So uh, I, I, th I think my accent for the first two auditions was truly horrendous. I had sort of, in the second audition in particular, I had the director sort of trying to correct it a bit and, and figure out how to steer me away from the car crash that was my accent back then. Um, but they put me in touch with a dialect coach. So I'd spend sort of these four hour sessions in the lead up to starting shooting um, with, with a man called Rick, who, who would take you through some of the sounds of the American accent and try and, yeah, prepare you to, to speak like that for the next few months. 
And before we get on to a bit of a quick time round, because we've got some some sort of quick fire questions for, for you before a game of Biscuit Face. Perfect, looking forward to it. We often talk with, um, well, I've got two questions. One's related to mentoring, and, 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 and let's start with the mentoring question. We, we believe in mentors. We're big fans of them. You mentioned your tutoring experience on set. Have you had mentors professionally, personally? What's their impact been? Certainly, certainly. I think one of the really one of the great things about being young on a film set is, is that you get to work with people who've uh, been in the industry for significantly longer than you. Um, I think a lot of them, p p people as well, have been child actors. So Neil Patrick Harris, who played Olaf, uh, started very young as well. Um, and a lot of them are so generous and giving with their time uh, to just give you the advice and, and the sort of guidance necessary to, to, to get through quite a, a surreal experience. Um, yeah, so I've been very, there's definitely guidance from, from other actors on set, particularly Neil was, was fantastic, uh, particularly from the first few seasons, he sort of scooped me up and, and little tidbits yeah. of advice and, and theory and things. He's a very cool character. He's a very cool absolutely, character. Absolutely, absolutely. My, my other question is about success. We talk to incredibly inspiring people like you now every week, which is a real privilege for Walter and I, we never say that enough. Oh, it's but a privilege to be here. We often, we often talk about success with people. Everyone has different definitions of success. And acting is a career where there is no end, really. It's like, what is success? Is it 25 Oscars? Is it working? Is it, frankly, doing a bit of theatre and giving up to go to university and do something else? <laughs> you have a clear idea of what success would be in your head, and how do you, how do you go about measuring that? Um, for me, I think success, and I think it applies to any sort of artistic way of, of living, uh, is is when you start truly engaging with what you're doing uh, to a level that the action of doing it makes you happy, not the external validation or the reception of it. Um, so for me, it's not necessarily about the parts or the scale of the roles. It's more doing things that I that challenge me and make me grow as a person um, and trying to find a sort of peace with, with, with that level of, of, of creating, I suppose. I think it's a great bit of advice to everyone to enjoy the process of doing something and you will reap the rewards of doing it well. I think that's... I hope so. Yeah, that's definitely... Yeah, and I, I don't practice what I preach in that regard at all. It's, it's very difficult. I'm still very much uh, crawling towards that at a slow pace, but I'm trying to sort of have that mental shift. You, you have the most uh, wonderful sense of self-awareness and uh, humility. I'm, I'm amazed. Um, we, 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 any, and there have been lots of questions. We're going to come on to our quick round in a second. But you rarely have the chance to get into the, the room, let alone the house of an actor. And there you have behind you um, things that quite clearly explain the things you like. Can you just take us through a couple of those photos? And what are the car number plates for? Absolutely. I, I'll, you can walk with me. I'll, I'll take you over. Um, the inside is going full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've got, I've actually got a few um, props from a series of unfortunate events up here somewhere. This was the clapperboard. It's just sort of weird mementos and things that uh, just remind me of of my time on set and things that I love. This is uh, the greatest album of all time, which is Rhinestone Cowboy by Glenn Campbell. It's very surreal, but it's 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 good. Um, what else can I show you? It's lasso because. Everyone needs a lasso in their life, I believe. Uh, yeah, that's the long and short of it, really. What's that? What's that vinyl behind you, Louis? The black one. Uh, this one. I think these. These are okay. This is this is a uh, the classic uh, sing along banjo party. Nice. Which is an essential for any anyone's collection. Um, no, the, the ones on the wall are more just charity shop ones. I don't mind getting <laughs> too damaged. <laughs> Wicked. Well, that is a that is an awesome moment for everyone uh, listening. We're now, oh, well. we're, we're now going to take some questions from the uh, audience. This is our quick fire round, Perfect. so we're going to need quick answers. And Henry and I are going to alternate. I'm going to start with um, uh, Lee Leverk's question. Who is one of your favourite actors at the moment? Uh, Alex Lawther is doing some fantastic things. Everything he, Alex Lawther seems to do is it's phenomenal and tasteful and, and beautiful. So probably Alex Walter. And what about best actor you've worked with? Um, 
Adam Godley's probably up there, uh, if not Elle Fanning, I think. Adam Godley with the ears. Alan Godley with the ears, exactly, exactly. He's very sort of learned, really knows knows the craft. He's a great, uh, speaking of mentors, he was fantastic with advice. Jemima says, um, have you got a TikTok account? I don't, I don't. I, I'm not coordinated enough for the, the, the things. Um, <laughs> but maybe maybe one day. We know you're friends with our previous guest, Bash Croft. Indeed. Who is very seriously into TikTok. So, so I think he's laid down a marker there. It's true, it's true. I couldn't start until I felt I could at least be on par with his prowess. And what about scariest moment on a film set? Was it day one or another time? Um, probably day one. Yeah, probably day one, but it's also, I wouldn't necessarily call it scary. There's a, it's very invigorating. It's, it's nerve-wracking. Um, but there's also a huge amount of excitement that comes with that. Um, I think that some of the scary things are when you have sort of external pressures. So if there are days that press are watching, for example, and your normal routine slightly thrown off by having to portray yourself as well as your character between the two, so that then it gets a bit stressful. Hard, hard enough to be one person, let alone two. Well, quite, yeah. That's a great, that's a great answer, Louis. Um, a dream role, we asked Bash this, and we asked uh, Alf, Alf Enoch last week, what would be your dream role if you could choose one? I think any Black Mirror would be phenomenal. I love any, everything Charlie Brooker writes. I think that would be my dream. Awesome. I think it's time to play some Biscuit Face. Perfect. I'm excited. I was watching uh, Bash Crofts and I, okay, I'm, I'm... Do we need to explain the rules or not? I've actually played it before. I have... Uh, it's, I mean, we called it the After 8 games. We do it with After 8. But, There's um, a lot for you right here on our leaderboard. Perfect. How did Bash do? Bash got Bash actually did very well. Thirteen seconds. He's 13 been seconds. He had an unbelievable record on Wednesday from Alex Wright, who's an entrepreneur, who got five and a half, five point six seconds with a hobnob. He's a machine with a hobnob as well. That's further art. There's pressure. <laughs> Digestive. And remember, everyone out there, the aim of course is to say you want to beat Louis Hines, Oscar winner, uh, a future Oscar winner uh, at a game of biscuit face. So go and get your biscuits and then, you know, whatever, if you want to tag okay. us, then you can or not. But anyway, we're going to have a, we're going to have a go to now. Louis, what is that biscuit? I don't really know. My, we didn't have any biscuits in the house. So my mum ran out to the, the nearest shop. I think it's some chocolate and ginger Delicious. something. I feel so bad it. when you say a big thank you to her. That's very kind. We've no, had no, it's all good. It's all good. We need a biscuits anyway. It's perfect. We've had a few cop outs without biscuits. who have just played with Rivita and I always thought that was cheating. So well done. <laughs> All right, are we yes. ready? We've got 30 seconds starting okay. on my countdown. Three, two, one, go. Louis taking a good lead on the forehead, resting on the nose. Oh, oh no, it's gone. You get another go. You keep going. Okay, okay. Across the room. I think you've got to like get to the, to the side, no? I think you probably do. Commit to one side of the face and then... Oh, that's awful. One more go. Ah! Oh. There we go. Hooray! 23 seconds. 23 seconds. <laughs> yes, Louis. Very Tough good. Man. He's got a bit of ginger on his face. Funnily enough, Rupert Bassett says, can we please get, play the game? Because the chocolate on my biscuit has melted. 